Hi, my name's Adam Buxton. Hi, my name's Joe Cornish. <laughs> Why are you doing that voice? I don't know. It's just a sort of, uh, sort of, uh, radio voice. Okay. I like it. Um, welcome to two hours of Adam and Joe on the radio. We're here with you until three o'clock. We'll be playing Dizzy's in the Dock. Will we be having a celebrity regression? Yeah, we've got a celebrity regression. Oh, brilliant. It's pretty uh, easy, this one. Yeah, we're also gonna link up live with, uh, Alex, Zane, Lowe, <laughs> uh, I always panic about his name because there's so many Alexes. There's, uh, there's, well, it's the Zane factor, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay, I just had a little panic. Alex but Zane. I was right, wasn't I? Alex Zane. Yeah. But Alex Zane, who's at Ulu at the XFM event there, will be going live to him at I think about half past for a live link up. I'm excited about that. Yeah. In fact, we could act it out right now and see if it matches up. Really? You pretend to be the presenter, I'll pretend to be Alex. Okay. Hello, Alex. Ha! Uh, oh, hi! Alex, can you hear us? Yeah, yeah! Are you, are, are you awake, Alex? What? How long have oh, you been sorry. awake for? Sorry. Have you snogged oh, any young oh, XFM listeners yet? Three hours. What? Okay, bye! Bye! That's it. I am gonna ask him whether he's snogged any XFM listeners. Cause I think he does. He does. Have you seen his I girlfriend? I think he does. Have you seen his girlfriend? Well, hopefully she's not listening, but I d I've never, I don't have any concrete evidence, but I think Zane Lowe probably <laughs> humps a lot of listeners. You're and I envy him. You're talking about Zane Lowe now? Yeah. We're talking well, about Alex Zane. Alex Zane. This is getting very confusing. Listen, man, do you want to hear the new White Stripes single? Yes. Okay, here it is. This is Blue Orchid. <laughs> Hard Fi. Good name. With, Hard uh, Fi. Yeah, Tied Up Too Tight is the name of the track. Very good, I think. That's a good one. Mm. And before that you heard, uh, the new single from the White Stripes, Blue Orchid. Always inventive with their kind of limited palette. And that's another smash, I think, from the, uh, Detroit Powerhouse. That's what I'm calling them. Great. Okay. And, uh, Joe, I'm standing this week. Have you noticed that? Yeah. I'm trying it out. I don't know how long it's gonna last for, but usually I sit in a, in a, a wheelie chair. Yeah. This week I'm standing <coughs> like, like some kind of, uh, person, person man. man standing up. Man, man with legs. Yeah. Who stands up. I'm hoping it's gonna make my delivery more dynamic! Okay. It's, yeah, well, it's working well so far. Yeah. Now listen, listeners, uh, of course it's very exciting because, uh, is it Revenge of the Sith mm. is coming out. Uh, very soon, in a couple of weeks. And Star gonna, Wars 3. Star Wars 3, and we're gonna be talking about it a little bit, but what I'd like to do is I'm gonna show Adam a picture. Uh, this is in an American magazine called Entertainment Weekly, and it's a picture that disturbs me greatly, because I'm excited about, uh, Revenge of the Sith, and I think it might be good, it might be better than the previous films. I'm trying to find this flipping picture. But I saw this spread in Entertainment Weekly, and now I'm very worried. Are you ready, Adam? Well, I'm pretty worried, because I cycled past a big stupid picture of Yoda, uh, on the way. Okay, we're gonna get Adam's- obviously you at home, you, uh, you can't see what I'm gonna show Adam, but just check out this reaction. Are you excited about the film? Uh, I am, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, how about that? Oh, that's a Wookiee sp- a Wookiee spread. What? A Wookiee Don't gallery? Don't see Just- just react to it. Look at that. Well, it's- it's- Bad. It Look looks that. bad. It looks like Harry and the Hendersons makeup tests. This is a, I'll tell you, listeners, this is a spread of eight Wookiees in Entertainment Weekly. They're just headshots of Wookiees. Cause they've had to develop more Wookiees. And basically, uh, it looks like the Bee Gees, doesn't it? It looks like DLT. It looks like Dave Lee Travis and his family. <laughs> It's a bad sign. The Wookiees were always light relief. I don't understand why they've- I thought this was gonna be darker, this one. Well, I've compiled a list of things that are worrying me about Revenge of the Sith. And we'll get to that later, but that's the chief one, the Have Wookiees. you seen the, um, Pringles ad with the lightsaber made of Pringles? No. Yeah, have I've seen that. Have you seen Darth Vader's Orange Wednesdays ad? <laughs> no way. Darth Vader's done an Orange Wednesdays ad. They're doing anything. Maybe they'll do an ad- for, we could make them do an ad for something. Uh, R2-D2 could do an ad for pedal bins, you know, for like, uh, fresh- Yeah. Freshy things. Yeah. What do you call them? Pedal bins. M you know, fresh uh, things that bins. make bins smell fresh. <laughs> Anyone? Help me! Scented bin bags. My Scented bin bags. Melting. Scented bin bags. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Let's go to the record quickly. Okay. Um, I j just while I remember it though, you've got to check out the Pringle ad because it's really good. Like there's a- he takes- he flips the top off his Pringles and a big laser beam shoots out with Pringles suspended 
at various points up the no. beam. So he can simply reach in. He doesn't burn himself to understand why there's, uh, certain logic. Sorry, who's doing this? Who, who's holding the lightsaber? Uh, the Pringle guy. Okay, not one of the Star Wars characters. No, no. He's a Pringle guy, and, uh, he can pluck out Pringles from the beam. Mm. They're suspended in the beam. Mm. He doesn't, uh, yeah, hurt himself. Mm. And just has the pleasure of the Pringles. And then there's a growl, and he notices that his lightsaber beam has had a big bite taken out of it. The, 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 and guess who's sat next to him? Chew back of the Wookiee. <laughs> I tell you what, they're a, they're a Revenge of the Sith scratch lottery scratch cards as well. And on, on the tills in the newsagents, there's a picture of you and McGregor, and it says, are these the scratch cards you're looking for? <laughs> or something like that. This could be a texter, couldn't it? Worst possible Star Wars time product. What's a time? I mean, they, it couldn't get much worse than that, could it? Oh, but, but Star Wars invented the whole time product thing. Time thing. Mm. So I think they, they've, they're totally shameless. They'll do anything. Well, text us. What, what, what would be the worst, uh, Star Wars time product you could possibly get? 83XFM, uh, is the text number. Um, you can win a book. This book, right, Lila? Simon Reynolds. Oh, we got five. Okay, you can't win the book. You win, you win something else. You'll win something amazing. Looks like a good book. Yeah. R rip it up and start again by Simon Reynolds. Post Punk, what are we going to give that away for? That's then? for Ditches in the Dock, maybe. Oh, Ditches in the Dock. And of course, you can always give us a call. Uh, we'd love to hear from you as long as you're not insane, abusive, or excessively drunk. 0871 222 1049 is the number. Right now, here's the Breeders. <laughs> Mm. Oh, oh yes, mm. right. Mm. Uh, now we've got a text. I say who it was. was. Who, oh, go who, on then. Go on then. It's athlete. Oh, oh, that was athlete. I, I think I wish he'd learned to sing properly. That he time. can sing. It. He's emoting. Oh, he's singing like this. You're frightened of feelings. He, he upward ends his uh, sentences. That's right. You know, which is very annoying in conversation. People who talk like that all the time. Oh, right it's now? slightly different. It's not. It's not an upward inflection. I don't know. I think it is. It's an emotional mm -hmm. inflection. Mm -hmm. Um, there we go. Great, great track there, well, <laughs> obviously. Um, we've got a text competition, uh, we're asking you what the stupidest possible, uh, Star Wars tie-in product would be. We've been inundated with ideas. Uh, one of the most popular seems to be ladies' lightsaber tampons. Uh, you just have to think don't, about that for a little uh, bit. Yeah, don't we won't go into any detail. Don't dwell on that one. Don't, well, dwell on it in long. your mind. But that's come from Natalie in SW14 and Rax. That's who might, might be a Star Wars character. Rax. <laughs> Maybe he's flying by in his X-Wing. Uh, C-3PO anal suppositories. Well, that's dirty. Well, yeah, but it's necessary why, for some people. Why, I've why, never used them myself. How is C-3PO germane to the notion of anal he's, suppositories? Because he's gay. That's slow, I know see. it's low. I Very. know it's low. I was thinking that's more... That's from Ben. Ben. You see, Ben... Adam's not impressed. I'm not impressed I don't with think, that. I don't think Ben's serious, you know, he's not... It's just being silly. I know, but it's cheap. Uh, it's very cheap. It's not the kind of level that we would normally stoop okay, to. Okay, okay. Star Wars Lou Roll, The Empire Wipes Back. Quite good. Quite good. I, that was a nameless one. Uh, the Queen Amidala home, home Pregnancy Test. Why? What's that? Because she gets pregnant with Luke and Leia, doesn't she? Well, that's pathetic. Well, she's she's knowledgeable. Pregnant. It's just a nerdy one. What about the Queen Amidala? Shall I tell you who that's from? <laughs> what, who? Crazy Kraz. Crazy, you're not crazy. With two Ks. You're not crazy, Kraz. Crazy Kraz must be crazy to call him. You've got to change your name Kras. just to Kraz. Okay? Crazy Kraz. Because what about okay, the about Queen Amidala dress? Because she's a woman. What no, about come that? Come on, come on. H how about this? Uh, Yoda phone top up vouchers. Very good. From Matt and Chiselhurst. <laughs> See, that's you see? Good. And there's plenty more. We're being inundated, and we, we haven't even told you what you can win, and you can win tickets to see the Zootons on April the 1st. What? April the 1st has passed. Is this some sort of time travel competition? April the 1st is, uh, April Fool's Day. <laughs> oh, dear. At the Carling Brixton Academy. Maybe it's next year. There. They're very popular. Right, there's, they genuine, there's, genuine, genuine, there's genuinely a Zoot Zooton stick. Is it not on April the 1st, are they? What are you oh, playing at? That's my fault. That's a typo. So this is a real prize, though? Yes, it is. Yeah, okay. We don't I know quite when it is, but you can win tickets to the Zootons. Uh, so keep those coming in. The stupidest Star Wars product tie-in. And we're going to talk a little more about potential things that look a bit dodgy about Revenge of the Sith, even though I'm trying to be very excited and positive about it. You haven't actually seen it, have you? No. Uh, how much do you know about it then? Quite, uh, quite a lot. Quite a lot. I went into Borders and I flicked through the... The book. The book. Mm -hmm. I, I read the... I did that as well. I read the back page. I read the last page. Isn't that pathetic? <laughs> <laughs> to find out how it ends. Uh, have you looked at all the picture books and stuff? 
No. With the photos from the, f no. from the film. I couldn't help doing that. Really? Yeah, there's some quite good Bernie, uh, burnt Hayden Christian st uh, mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can't talk about too much because people get angry when you ruin things. Well, I, I don't know anything about it except for the pictures in the book. Yeah. Oh, they don't show that much because we, we can't talk about that topic anymore. Okay, then. Wow, we can't talk about much. We can't talk about politics. No. Because of the election. Sort of politics. We can't talk about Star Wars because of the sensitivity of Star Wars fans. Well, let's just play some music. Wow. That's good, man. I really like that. That's the Future Heads with Decent Days and Nights. This is Adam and Joe on XFM. Guess what time it is, Joe? Oh, I think, what, in terms of the clock or in terms of exciting features? Exciting features. A competition time! Competition time. You could win a DVD or tickets to a show. You just never know. So sharpen up your brain and get ready to play. What, what competition is it? <laughs> Celebrity regression okay. therapy. Um, and, uh, boy, it's really a very easy one this week. It's, I mean, you'd have to be just stupid not to get it. And what's up uh, as a prize? Uh, for Celebrity Regression this yeah. week, I think we're giving away copies of Miami Vice. Nice. Uh, the, the 80s TV series. It's a box set. It's got eight discs, over 18 hours of Miami Vice. TV's hottest and hippest cop show. <laughs> yeah, I'm just reading off the box. <laughs> As it was. I never w really years watched ago. that when it went out. Did you used to watch it? Miami Vice is one of those shows that all the, the cool lads used to watch. Really? Yeah. Are you sure? It was like the Sweeney and things like that, which I was always a bit too poncy for. I remember everybody rolling up their jacket sleeves at school. Did they really? Yeah, yeah, just rolled, rolled them up like that. But that wasn't a vice thing, was yeah. it? Yeah, oh, absolutely, yeah. The, uh, yeah, a suit jacket with rolled up sleeves. Wow. Not actually rolled, but just pushed up. I remember you going know? out and buying a white waiter's jacket mm. to wear on holiday to mm. make myself look more like Don John Don Juan. Juan Juan. Don Juan. And, uh, that was my nod to Miami Vice. It was sort of nominally exciting. All I remember about it was when Phil Collins turned up. As there a, you go. As a villain. And everyone yeah. said, doesn't Phil Collins do a brilliant job as a villain? Well, maybe that episode is on here. I'm sure it is. Uh, but it's a terrific prize, eight discs, and that's what you win if you get, um, this celebrity regression correct. Are we gonna start then? Yeah, I'm just gonna position my mic, it might rumble a bit. Have we got the regression bell? Yep, 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 yep. You have to get the proper atmosphere. Here we go then. Don't forget, the telephone number is 0871 I'm now gonna regress Adam into the mind and films of a famous film star. Call 0871 the moment you recognize all three films and who Adam has been regressed into, and you could win those Miami Vice DVDs. Here we go. So deep breaths. If you'd like to be, uh, regressed along at home, then just take deep breaths as, as well. It won't work, though, obviously. Um, and relax and, okay, close your eyes. And imagine you're on a, imagine you're on a beach. Um, and I don't mean a, a beach like by the sea, I'm a beach like sort of being... Midler. Exactly. Mm. Imagine you're on a beach. And and you're very relaxed. And anyway, blah, blah, blah. Now you're regressed. And wake up. Tell us what you see. <gasps> I'm at work, where I'm an ex expert in chemical warfare. My name is Dr. Goodspeed, which sums me up, and come to think of it, it sums up my acting style, too. I often play good or heroic people with a speedy or crazy edge, allowing me to unleash my cartoonish acting powers. Right now, I'm unwrapping a package which I sent away for. It's a very old album, which I paid 600 bucks for, and it's Meet the Beatles by the Beatles. I'm pleased, because I'm a Beatles maniac. It's only a detail, but it helps to show that I'm a real person rather than a ludicrous cut-out figure. This will be important later on in this film when I meet my co-star, who is one of the most overrated Scottish men since Mel Gibson. I'm drifting into a quirky sleep. Okay, that's that's film number one. Adam's now fallen unconscious. 0871 if you can guess the star. Or the film, let's regress him into a different film. Adam, wake up. Tell us what you can see. <gasps> I'm outside. Uh. There's lots of men. Uh. We're marching. Uh. Wait a second. Uh. Why am I talking like this? Uh? 
Oh, yes. I'm talking like this because I'm an Italy man. From Italy. <laughs> Bella pasta tutti frutti. Two ice cream for the lady. You very beautiful. Bella bambi. Special edition. It's so sad when the mother gets shot. That's a different film. In this film, I have a tiny instrument. Not my wiki, you understand? But a musical instrument which I use to charm the ladies. Gino Ginelli, I'm in the army ice cream from Italy. Bella pasta, Garibaldi, I'm drifting into a deep sleep. Okay, again. deep, deep, deep breaths, Adam. There we go. Amazing sudden grasp of Italian. <laughs> and now the third and final film, remember, 0871 <laughs> If you recognize what star Adam is being regressed into and all three films. Okay, wake up, tell us what you can see for the last time. Oh, I'm in a big glass building. Sun streaming through the windows. I can hear heavenly voices. A choir of young girls is singing for some reason. And I'm enjoying it because I'm a priest. In fact, I'm enjoying it so much, I'm going to suddenly break into a crazy, shaky head dance, which you would not normally associate with a priest. But that's because I'm not a priest. I'm just dressing up like one, and it's ironic because I'm the most evil man in the world. And the main reason I'm happy is that I've just planted a huge bomb that's going to go off very soon. And to celebrate, I'm going to go and stand right next to those choir girls and fondle their buttocks because I'm E-V-I-L, evil. Which is, interestingly, almost spelling Elvis as well. Another person I am heavily influenced by. That's enough clues by. Okay, there we go. 0871 Adam will now uh, enter his regress state. He's unconscious mm -hmm. until you call in and tell us which famous actor he was regressed into and what films. 0871 You could win Miami Vice. Call now! This is Adam and Joe on XFM. You join us in the middle of celebrity regression. Adam has been regressed into the mind and movies of a famous film star. There's a copy of the Miami Vice box set up for grabs to the person who has guessed who Adam's been regressed into. Adam obviously is in his unconscious state. He won't wake up until the correct films and acts as a, a said. If someone gets it wrong, you could do permanent damage to his already quite damaged brain. <laughs> Keith is on the line. Hello, Keith. <laughs> Keith, speak to us. Hello, Keith. Hey, me. Nice. My name's Kevin. Oh, Kevin. Like that. No, oh, that's... Well. Sorry. Okay. Hello, Kevin. How are you doing? All right, not bad. No, good. 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 Very good. Now, are you confident? Uh, yeah, re relatively, yeah. Uh, it was quite an easy one, wasn't it? It's a shame. Everybody who called in got it right. We didn't get a wrong one. We like to have a really bad, uh, guess. Oh, wow. Uh, we didn't okay. get one this week. Okay, so, Kevin, what I'd like you to do is, first of all, let's start with the names of the films, because okay. they won't wake Adam up. Uh, what do you think the films were? Uh, the first one is The Rock. The Rock. The second one is, uh, Captain Corelli's Mandolin. Okay, ha hang on, how did you deduce The Rock? What gave The Rock away? Uh, just, just through the, the well, I've obviously, I've, it's one of those films I've obviously, I've seen too many times, I actually hate it now. I've yeah. Been, I hate it now. Really? Um, yeah, that would, it, it's not that good. <laughs> yeah. So, but how did you guess it? Uh, through, um, through him ordering the, uh, did he buy a Beatles record? Buying a Beatles the record, there you go. Okay, number, number two, what was film number two? Captain Crowley's Mandolin. How did you guess that? It's through Small Instrument. I haven't seen the film, um, I think The Rock put me off Nicolas Cage movies. <laughs> Small Instrument, okay. It wasn't the amazing Italian accent that gave that uh, away. It might have been a little bit of that as well, yeah, it could well be that, yeah. Uh, alright, and what was the third film? Uh, the third film was, um, The Face Off. Face off. The face off. <laughs> Quite simply because I'll never forget. Uh, Does he come around? Buxton, he's stirring. He's stirring. Oh, really? Of course, I was woken up by the the sheer level of correctness. Okay, <laughs> that was great. Three out of three. Fantastic. It was quite easy, wasn't it? I thought maybe face off might be a bit confusing, but you obviously. The, you know, our generation is very familiar with those films, I guess, mm. and no one's seen Captain Corelli's Mandolin, but everyone knows that it features Cage at his ludicrous yeah. worst. You know, I interviewed him once, as a million billion people in the media have done, but I did one of those tw sort of twenty minute interviews with him in a hotel room, just me and him, and he did a fantastic thing. He sort of got distracted in the middle of the interview, maybe I'd asked a boring question, stood up, walked over to the fireplace and the mantelpiece and the mirror with his back to me, and just spread his arms out like a crucifix and took an enormous breath. <laughs> <sighs> like that, as if he was one of his characters. <laughs> it was fantastic, and then turned around and sat down and just carried on. <laughs> so he really is quite, quite, a, uh, quite a quirky, quite a quirky man. Quite a quirky man. Well done, Keith, there you go. You've won Miami Vice. Does that excite you? 
Yeah, yeah, relatively, yeah. Are you going relatively? Are you gonna watch all of those? All, all eight uh, discs? Yeah, I'm just gonna, in the minute, I'm just gonna get it and just watch it all. Well done. Fantastic. Well, there you go. And of course, uh, if you try to enter the competition and still want Miami Vice on DVD, it's in the shops now. Fantastic. Yeah. Courtesy of Universal Video. Kevin, thank you very much indeed for your call and for your intimate knowledge of the work of Nick Cage. Uh, I hope you enjoy Miami Vice. Of course, don't watch it uh, too much here because then you'll forget to vote and we don't want anyone to do that. You know what we're going to do next? What are we going to do gonna next? We're going to announce the winner of our Star Wars text competition. Oh, fantastic. We'll do that after these ads. XFM. Wow, that's got swagger. Epic swagger of epic proportions. It's epic. The ref- uh, that's the tears with refugees. Mm. You know, uh, we, it was my mum's birthday, um, on Thursday. We went out for a very nice meal. She listens to the show every week. Hello, mum. You know, I actually call her mummy. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> if I'm on the radio or in public, I tend to call her mum. Do you do that? Do people out there do that? If you're in your house talking to your mummy, can you call her mummy? <laughs> But if you're in the street, you go, yeah, mum, well, mum, yeah, mum, ask my mum. But I can't do it, this is what, not what I was going to talk about, but I can't make that switch if I'm actually in front of her. Yeah. Does that ever happen to you? You've got, you've got a friend round and your mother's there and you go, oh, and this is my mummy. Yeah. Like that, because you don't want your friend to think you're a ponce. Well, at a certain point, uh, I was watching <sighs> EastEnders and I always remember Nick Cotton used to call his mother Ma. Ma, And I yeah. thought that would be a good way of getting round it, so I always just referred to my mum as Ma. Right. Sometimes I go the other way, I think, I, okay, because I'm worried that mummy sounds too, you know, poncy and posh, so I think I let go even further. Mama. <laughs> you never call her Well, mama. sometimes, no, it was a joke. Oh, I go, right. this is my mama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, then the person thinks, oh, God, you really are just a posh idiot. Well, that's right. Well, that's what I think about maybe calling her Ma, because I think maybe the reason Nick Cotton was doing it as a, uh, it was as a kind of joke. It's yeah. the sort of thing that posh people do. Mummy, mummy. And then I just ended up being super posh. Oh, dear. Anyway, the point is, she listens to the show every week, and she really enjoys the music, but she said that she likes the music because she thinks the music's very sweet. On XFM, she thinks, and that's a good observation of, of the general current, uh, indie music scene. Very sweet. And she says all, all the boys who sing sound as if they're going to cry. <laughs> she said. <laughs> Son, I think that's nice, isn't it? That's Absolutely. A, that's a good thing. Thanks, Mummy. Thank I'm you very much. I'm gonna unashamedly call you Mummy. Yeah. From now on. Well, good one. What about your dad? Do you call him Daddy? I call him Dumbles. <laughs> I don't, I'm lying. I don't call him Dumbles. I call mine Poppy uh, Waffles. <laughs> Poppy Waffles. <laughs> Not in public, though. Yeah, in public. In private, I call him Chief. Poppy Waffles. Do, like, do really tough people, like hard men, who've maybe served time, uh, call their mums mummy? It's weird, you know, because, um, now that I've got children myself, you know, it's just a very natural instinct to tell them that your name is Daddy, you know, because it's, yeah. it's... Well, it's nice to say, isn't it? It's like, yeah. Google, Google. it's like a baby sound. Exactly, it's cute. It's and comforting so, to say. So, it's difficult. I don't think there's any point at which you sort of say, hey, come on, you're four now, it's looking a bit poncy, this whole Daddy business. That was fine when you were a toddler. But, um, I want you from now on to either refer to me as Dad, Mr. Buxton... Well, kids usually go through a phase of calling their parents by their first names, don't they? Really? Yeah. Quite a lot of kids. I know some people who still, who through their whole childhoods called their parents by their first names. I bet you there's listeners out there who that's the case. Like when they were nine, they'd say, Yes, Marjorie. All right, Donald. If their parents were called Marjorie and Donald. That's very unconventional. It's unconventional, but it's not unheard of. No, it's not unheard of, I agree, but when I always heard people, like, if my friends were calling their parents by their first names, I'd think, something is amiss in this unit. I don't like it. Mm. I've got to get out or report you to the social services. Yes. And usually I would. Someone's texted in, I call my mum Bum. Bum? Yes, after calling her it while drunk one night and finding it highly hilarious. And she calls me Poo, because it sounds like Lou. Bum and comes poo. from Louise. Louise, that's a strange Louise, asshole. Louise, you live in a mucky place. <laughs> You've got to get out of that mucky place. So listen, uh, I, I thought we'd play a record and then maybe tie up the Star Wars texting thing. How do you feel yeah, about no, that? Yeah, that's good. It's just one more text. Apparently in Black Books, yeah. Bill Bailey's character, uh, there's, apparently there's a, a sort of episode about that on Black Books, and Bill Bailey's parents turned up at the, uh, at the bookshop and he called them Muma. And Moopa. Yeah, that's right. That's <laughs> a good Moomar episode. And Moopa. That's good. That's a good compromise. Muma. This is my Muma. This is my Moopa. Like the Moomins. Yes. Uh, and this is, uh, Tiger.
there you go, that's Tiger, who at one stage, Lila, were gonna be sort of big and exciting, weren't they? But who's saying they're not still? <laughs> well, that, that Poor was- Poor old Tiger. That was from 1996, that uh, was a long time ago, and they haven't really been heard of since. But We Are Puppets, their debut album, is really good, and that's uh, a track called Storm Injector from it. So, uh, Tiger, if you're out there, it's not too late. Come on, pull your finger out. They're probably doing very well uh, under other names, I would imagine. Uh, this is Adam and Joe on XFM. Not quite time, I think, to do proper justice to the texting competition, which- Oh, uh, I don't know. Well, do you want to read out a few more that have come no, in, No, no. We'll do it after the, after the, uh, the top of the hour. Maybe you could just remind people what it is. We have had the text competition where you had to text us to tell us what the stupidest Star Wars time product is, and it's actually unleashed an avalanche of dreadful Star Wars puns. Uh, and ideas like Chewbacca chewing tobacco. <laughs> that's not that bad. It's not that bad, is it? <laughs> so anyway, there's some quite good ones. We'll be awarding the prize, which is tickets to see the Zootons tonight at the Brixton Academy, right after this. XFM. Why, why don't you just leave there? Why don't you just go somewhere else? What about that? Why don't you just leave? Oh my god, I can't believe it. I've never been this far away from home. Why don't we play that one again? <laughs> oh my god, I don't believe it. I've never been this far away from home. <laughs> why can't we bring that one back? That's not in the charts no more. Well, I don't care. I like it. That was Razorlight with Somewhere Else. Very nice song indeed. Yes, and so before that... Oh, sorry, Nan. I had to say now. before that. Mm -hmm. Jerk it out by the Caesars. Sam and Joe on XFM, we're here with you for another 50 minutes. We've got Digit in the Dock coming up at the end of the hour. At half past two, we'll be going live to Alex Zane. Uh, sorry, little bit of wind. At the Ulu, Carling Live, whatever it is, big day out thing that's happening. Um, but we should resolve our text competition. The prize is tickets to see the, see the Zootons tonight. Uh, and the question was, what's the stupidest Star Wars tie-in product? Could you think of one stupider than, uh, Revenge of the Sith? Scratch cards, that's a real one. These are the scratch cards you're looking for, it says. Yeah. Uh, Darth Vader doing Orange Wednesdays. I don't understand what Orange Wednesdays are. It's those adverts with, uh, with, uh, you know, the, the orange film people and, and celebrities oh, come and pitch oh, a film. Yeah. They had one with Sean Astin in it. Yeah. Carrie Fish has been in one. Uh, Patrick Swayze's done one. Uh, Spike Lee's done one. Everybody who's slightly on the uppers. Yeah. Pops over and does one. Yeah. It's, it's like when a Hollywood star turns up in a West End play. Mm-hmm. Val Kilmer, Christian Slater. You know, they're brilliant people, but maybe they're finding it a tiny bit difficult to get enough work. Proper <laughs> work. In, in, in America. Anyway, I digress. So, we've got a lot of punny ones, and we've had a lot of very odd ones, uh, that I don't really understand. We've had, we've had ideas like Jabba the Hutt fitness video from Gareth. Obviously, because Jabba the Hutt's very fat. Yeah. Um, so that's quite good. What about this one from Sean in Camberwell? I'd like someone in Camberwell to win something, because I live in Camberwell. Uh, Sean says, Jawas, advertising fruit salad, dash, dash, fruitini. Oh, uh, that's what they say. Is it? Well, they say, fruitini. Oh, and there's a, f there's a fruit salad called fruitini. Yeah. So they'd go, fro. When do they say Utini? Utini! Well, you know what? That is a bone of contention between me and my brother because I don't believe I've ever heard them say Utini. I know you everyone says, oh, they do, they do. But when I, do they say it? At what point in the narrative very, do they say it? In the sand, in the sand crawler thing. A, a new hope, very, very beginning. When the, when the Jaws first Yeah, started. is that like in Return of the Jedi one? No, in Star um, Wars. She oh, said, yeah. in a new, in the new hope. She knows all the oh, stuff. All they the do, chapter really names. Okay, <laughs> stay calm, Lila, stay calm. I know in the video game, do you remember on the, um, on the SNES, uh, the Star yeah. Wars, they definitely said Utini a lot. That's right, so there we go. So that's a good en entry then, basically, from Sean in Camberwell. Uh, here's some others. Richard, uh, suggests Yoda advertising Little Chef with the slogan, may the sauce be with you. That's bad. We should, we should get him in here and maybe, Punish I'm not him. suggesting slapping him hard, but just enough to remind him that that's not acceptable. Pale John has sent in some suggestions. Do you remember Pale John? He won uh, the competition a few weeks ago. Yeah. I can't remember which one. Uh, oh no, he won the competition where we were uh, asking people to come up with stuff for the BBFC certificate boxes. That's right, and his suggestion is Yoda replacing Thor Heard in the Stannis Stairlift adverts. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. That also came from Andy and Tom. Um, so, but I think we should give it to Natalie, who came up with the lightsaber tampons. 
Natalie, is that Natalie Portman who sent that Very in? Very possibly. She lives in SW14, I believe. Yeah, there you go. And she's texted in also Space to say- Space World 14. Space World 14. She's also texted to say she fancies me. Oh, well that's why so you're giving that push, it to that her, pushes isn't it? it over the edge for me. Giving her the prize because you want to give her something else. Yeah. You know, but, um, if she can't make it to see the Zootons tonight in Brixton, uh, then, you know, we should give the, the prize to something else. So, Natalie, you win. If you can't make it to see the Zootons, well, we're gonna give you a call. Uh, and if you can't make it to see, to see the Zootons, we'll give those tickets to someone else, but we'll keep everyone updated about that. It's very exciting. Okay, now, Joe, uh, I don't believe you've heard A Glorious Day by Embrace before, have you? No. But it says here on the piece of paper that we have to sell this song. Right. Uh, and I haven't heard it either, so we're both at a disadvantage. But I nominate you, Joe Cornish, to sell the song. Okay, well, this is the fourth single to be taken from the Huddersfield Quartet's number one, fourth album, Out of Nothing. It's the follow up to Looking As You Are, which came out in February. Embrace a confirmed for the Isle of Wight Tea and the Park and V festivals this summer. This is uh, a, a, a fantastic slice of rock. <laughs> <laughs> is that it? <laughs> yes. Oh boy, Embrace aren't going to be calling you for any favours. Here we go. <laughs> I'm ill. Yeah, listen to that slice of rock. <laughs> what a terrific slice of rock. Um, that's Embrace. <laughs> Uh, with a glorious day. Now, if you listen to Sean Keaveney on Monday from 9am, he'll be giving away copies of the Virgin Megastore's album of the week, which is Hot Hot Heat Elevators. And there's more chances to win that album on www.xfm.co.uk. That's the Virgin Megastore's album of the week, Hot Hot Heat, with Elevators. It's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, very good. I'm sure that'll be an excellent album. Joe, have you seen the advert for Comfort? You know, we were talking a while ago about sort of loathsome animated families mm. in the advertising world. Mm. And surely the, you know, the material family. Yes, the stitched together Frankenstein family. Yeah, the cloth people are one of the most if not the most loathsome animated family on oh, television. Look, sorry, I'm just dropping. We've had a little text. Please don't ever play Embrace ever again. That's not, not very Moore. nice. It's not very nice, is it? Dicky. Anyway, sorry, keep going. Um, yeah, but d I mean, that's that's a given, isn't it? They're, they're pretty much up there with the worst yeah. of all time yeah. animated families. And they're really, uh, rotating heavily, the new ad. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it with Stitch, who's this frightening purple guy who comes along on a motorbike? Have you seen mm. that one? I think so. I, I'm not sure I've paid full attention. They're it's outside. It's the two, the two protagonists, the bloke and his girlfriend, are wandering around in their horrible cloth world, and suddenly this guy, a purple guy on a motorbike, comes along Stitch, and they go, oh no, it's Stitch! He's, uh, uh, and, uh, for some reason they let go of their bottle of comfort and it hits Stitch in the face and he gets covered with comfort. Ooh. And, um, they think, oh my goodness, Stitch is gonna come over and knock the stuffing out of us, etc. But, um, actually what happens is that Stitch is softened by the comfort. Oh. And he goes over and gives the guy a hug and then he goes oh. and he chases a butterfly. What a wonderful story. Have you not seen that ad? Yeah. But yeah. I don't think I paid proper attention. They make my eyes switch off those adverts. Mm. Did it uh, did it upset you at all? The advert? Well, we, we've talked about this before. I I, I, I hate it. Yeah, I hate and, and I hate them. I hate them very much. And this ad sort of takes my hatred to a new place, though, because it's there's something really creepy and disgusting mm. about Stitch, like in in an excessively uh, frightening way. Actually, my son is terrified by the ad, and I just, mm. I just wanted mm. to know if anyone out there has young children who are scared by it. Because Frank, and I think Frank is, you know, he's quite a beefy man-man. Maybe he's going into a new, slightly poncy phase. But he howls in fear whenever the ad comes on. He hates Stitch, and he really, it really makes him cry, like proper grief tears coming out of little Frank's face, and it's not very nice for me, obviously. But I know exactly where he's coming from, and I was just curious if anyone else out there had experienced the same thing with Stitch, the comfort. You know, jerk. the mistake they made was to do it in CGI. If they genuinely stitched little people mm. and paid us a lot of money to do it, yeah, that would be a brilliant advert. Absolutely. Hey, uh, you know that bit in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy where they all suddenly turn yep. into cloth people? Yeah. You see, that's charming. That's properly well yeah. done. They're actual, yeah. uh, cloth people. Someone's knitted them, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, there was an, uh, uh, was it a Michelle Gondry video for, um, I th oh, I can't remember the name of the band, but there was, uh, there's been a few knitted videos which have been... Yes. ...very good yes. as well. 
Hey, I'm not gonna get time to do my most worrying things about Revenge of the Sith, am oh, I? Oh, no, you definitely will. Let, let, will I? Yeah, we're gonna play, I'm, I've got a free play now, this is some classic Talking Heads, and after this we're gonna do the ads and then we'll come back with oh, some Revenge of the Sith. Which Talking Heads track? Uh, this is from Fear of Music and it's oh. called Cities. Think of London. That's Coldplay with Speed of Sound. This is Adam and Joe on XFM. Now, excitingly, it's mm. time to go live Oof. to another human being. Oof. We don't usually have other human beings on human our show, uh, apart from callers, of course, but this is a celebrity. Oh. It's Alex Zane from MTV's oh. The Alex Zane Show. <laughs> Alex, hello. Hello. How are you doing, Alex? I'm not too bad, thank you for that lovely... Lovely introduction. I was going to call you a dirty mop-headed pot pixie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'd have preferred that. I, well, I you've got it now. Being a pot pixie. How's things? How many XFM listeners have you slept with so far today? Uh, uh, none, <laughs> because that would be wrong morally, and I've already damaged my soul enough. Over the yeah, time. but how many? Four. Four. <laughs> okay, that's not bad for two thirty-two yeah, in the well, afternoon. <laughs> It's, you know, it's been bu I've been busy as well. I've had to go on stage and introduce bands, uh, and so Oh, that's a f annoying. There's that's only so much free time I have, uh, on a day like this. What a ludicrous living you make, Alex. <laughs> uh, now, can you describe the scene for, for people out there? Paint us a picture on the radio, Alex. Uh, can I not? Because the picture I paint isn't particularly thrilling at the moment. The information I have stored within my head is quite thrilling. But wow. I'm standing in an office at the University of London Union and someone's suede suit is hung up on the back of the door. Wow. You, you did it, you see? You did it. I asked you to paint a picture and you did. This I is can like see a, the suede um, suit. <laughs> this is like phone, this is like speaking to a war correspondent, isn't it? It's the rock uh, equivalent of speaking to a war correspondent. Isn't it? Someone say yes, agree with me. Yes, Joe. Thanks. Do I have to agree as well? I'm yeah, afraid. God. What have you been from this? Alex, who is the best band you have seen today? Uh, just got down here from, uh, just like I said, I've just arrived at Euler, just came from uh, the Carling Academy, Islington. The Kaiser Chiefs were phenomenal. Right. In fact, right Did, there, did they play, oh my God, I can't believe it, I've never been this far away from home? Uh, he did sing that, yeah. He also, uh, he, just before he sang that, he, uh, he stage-dived into the audience oh, wow. and, uh, and almost lost his pants to a very uh, voracious fan uh, who was, she was, oh, she was a small girl, but, really? man, could she grip. Really? And, and he at once <laughs> grabbed the security guard's hand and shoved it down his own pants as a way of going, don't let my pants come off, clutch me. And wow. All this before midday on a Saturday. Yeah, he also climbed up the scaffolding on the side of Health the stage and, and then slid down much like a fireman would. Yeah, oh. that is a health, health and safety issue. I hope you pointed that out to the Kaiser Chiefs. I, 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 I went on stage and stopped the gig. Mm. Uh, also, just on a grammatical point, I believe the past tense of to stage dive is stage dove. Uh, just bear it, it in really? mind. Yeah, he uh, stage dove. Oh. Doesn't matter, but let's move I, on. I, I, I ring up and I learn something new. Yeah. And are you getting a good response from, from the rock fans when you go on stage, Alex? Are they cheering? As you know, it's not really about me today, it's about the music. It and is about right, you. Right. And the, the, the response has been phenomenal. Uh, the response is going to get even better when our baby shambles. Uh, ah. You can take the stage here in about, in a couple of hours. Now, how likely is that to go off without incident? Uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like to give you a guesstimate. Do, I, I, do I, you I, think I, they'll actually show up? Well, I've got my fingers crossed. I believe so, yes. It's, it's for a good cause. Yeah. Well, that's very exciting stuff. And we're, and we're gonna, uh, uh, is, is that the main sort of, uh, you know, uh, content got done then? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> mean? Is that it then? Is that the, uh, is that the point? Is the point being put across? Can we move on? <laughs> Have we said the key phrase? <laughs> Have we said the key <laughs> phrase? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, Virgin yeah. Megastore's album of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Carling live beer. <laughs> okay. Alex, uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll just do it once more. Uh, yeah, so I'm at stage three of Carling Live, 24, 24 hours of live music across London. It's a phenomenal event and um, I'm very excited. And listeners can get down there, presumably, if, if, they, if they're excited by the sound of things, the coat on the back of the door and all that. <laughs> I, 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 be I believe um, I believe it's all been uh, pre-sold. Uh, it's all sold out. So it, it's more if you're coming already, great, come down. I'll see you here. If it's uh, if, if you're not coming, then have don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's nice, Alex. Thank you. Thank you so much for talking to us. Have a great day, and you uh, very much, guys. Yeah, we'll, we'll see you next week in, in here. Yeah. 
Yes, I'll be back next week, yeah. Yeah, good one. I love you, bye! Bye, Alex Aiden with your jaunty cap. Right now it's time for more live music. This is, uh, from a session that Brendan Benson did when he came into XFM, and, uh, uh, the track is called What I'm Looking For. Fantastic job, Benson, there. Brendan Benson with what I'm looking for. Well, this means I'm gonna have to hold over my hilarious list of top ten Revenge of the Sith Warriors till next week, but that's something exciting. When does Revenge of the Sith come to? out? Uh, a couple of weeks. Oh, so there's still okay. plenty of time. Yeah, lots of time. It's time for Ditties in the Dock, the part of the show where me and Adam, uh, what's the word? Battle it out! Battle it out! To decide who plays the final record of our two-hour show. This week, the theme is, uh, political, uh, records because of the forthcoming election. Mm. Political songs, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Well, we, 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 like all other broadcasters, Ooh. have been, we, we, like all other broadcasters, have been, you know, uh, told to steer clear of the whole political arena for fear of showing any kind of bias Undue on bias. behalf yeah. of the, uh, people they represent. So, you know, uh, we thought one way of maybe having a little bit of politics in the show would be to battle it out between a set of songs with some kind of political theme. Um, Joe, what so have many you... to choose from. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I was going to choose Russians by Sting. <laughs> that would have been a How good one. How can I save my little boy from Oppenheimer's deadly toy? There is no monopoly of common sense on either side of the political fence. Yeah. But I didn't choose that one. Uh, so I go through some other ones I didn't choose? <laughs> yeah, go on. Uh, did you know that Grandad by Arthur Dunn was actually written by the Politburo? Clive Dunn. Uh, Clive, uh, Clive Dunn? Yeah, mm. that's correct. Uh, written by the Politburo for Russian children, uh, to sing their praise of Stalin. And they just changed it to, to Grandad. Stalin. So I was going to choose that Stalin. one. Stalin. But instead, I'm going to go Stalin. for my favourite political song of all time, as a comfortably off-white boy growing up in a nice area of London. No political song uh, speaks to me with more power than public enemies fight the power. It's the most furious, intelligent, brilliant protest song ever, I think. Uh, an amazingly exciting record for well-off white boys. Produced by Hank Shockley and the Bomb Squad. Uh, and of course, with an incredible rap from Chuck D who is described by Hank Shockley as the voice of God in a storm. Uh, to give Chuck D his correct name, the messenger of prophecy, the lyrical terrorist, the hard rhymer and the architect, and of course, rapping alongside him, Flavor Flav, a.k.a. the cold lamp of the joker, the juice, and spark plug. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my wow. vote. Fight the Power by Public Enemy. I think one of the greatest rap records ever. Amazingly exciting record. Fantastic if you pump it up. Loud, brilliant, provocative lyrics. Uh, you know, it's gotta be the best protest record ever, I reckon. Stop, so my stop vote it. is Fight the Power by Public Enemy. Shut up! Whew! That was amazing! Thanks. I wanna vote for it myself now. You've never stirred me up like that before, Joe. I, I, it's, 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 it's arousing, isn't it? It's I exciting. love you! Thanks. It's rousing, arousing, I'm aroused. Well, what, what have you got now? Something, something with Frank on it? No, okay. I'm, I'm going to the. Don't say it like that. He's your godson. No, I, I know. It's nice. I was, I was hoping more, more Frank. Well, you know, Good I'm now. going to the other end of the political spectrum. Yeah. In a way, because this is the selfish side of politics, mm. and in fact, it's uh, you know a, a very important uh, part of politics because it's dealing with money and, in particular, tax. Now, who do you think I've chosen, Joe? Uh, is it the Floyd? It's not the Floyd, it's the Beatles with Taxman. Okay. Now, this is a, a track written by, uh, George Harrison, basically moaning about the fact that he was having to pay a lot of tax now that he was rich and famous. Um, and telling off, uh, Harold Wilson and Ted Heath for charging the Beatles lots of tax and complaining about it, but of course that's one of the uh, key factors that influence people's votes, and it will do for a lot of people this uh, Thursday. <laughs> uh, it's true, it's true. You know? Mm. So, uh, and it's a fantastic song, of course. It opens up perhaps the Beatles' best album, Revolver. Uh, it really packs a punch. It's very simple, but it's extraordinary. And uh, the swinging aspect of it notwithstanding, it's a sort of important political uh, blast. Swinging? I never knew what sw what does swinging mean. Moaning, moaning. Yeah. Never sort of knew what swinging meant. Selfish then. moaning kind kind there of behaviour. So, so that's it. Yeah, two two pretty extraordinary tracks there to choose from. Oh eight seven one two 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 one zero four nine. You all you have to do is phone up. We're going to take the best of five calls. And as motive, 
Everybody who gets on the air will win a copy of Simon Reynolds' Rip It Up and Start Again. That is a history of post-punk, 78 to 84, and the person with the deciding vote will win that book and the Miami Vice box set. What an extraordinary motive to call 0871 222 1049 and vote for the Beatles with Taxman or Public Enemy with Fight the Power. XFM. Sounds like old Atari noises. Stop it! That's Banquet by Block Party. Oh. Now, Joe, we missed a trick, man. We should have done the whole ditties and the dot thing. Like an election. I'm glad we didn't. No, but and, and then we, and we could have said, "Here's a party election broadcast on behalf of, of oh, the Beatles." You're right. Party. That would have been brilliant. And, and we could have gone. Um, I if we win, I pledge to provide rockin' riffs. <laughs> rockin' riffs. That kind of thing. Well, it is. Uh, the Beatles versus Public Enemy on Titties in the Dock. We've got five callers on the line. Okay, let it begin. Lucy, are you there? Yes. H how are you, Lucy? I'm very well, thank you. You sound quite serious. Yeah. <laughs> are you heavily hungover? Um, no, I wish I was actually. I'm on a bit of a detox. Usually I would detox. Though. Detox? Celebrity detox? Yeah, I wish. <laughs> are you going to be offering bowls of your own feces to your family to look at? Oh, no way. Right. That's what happens in celebrity detox, isn't it? Luckily I'm not a celebrity. Didn't Richard Black would do that? I didn't watch celebrity oh, detox. Oh, for that very reason. Yeah. Uh, did you- how long has your detox been going on? Uh, about two weeks. Two weeks? That's pretty it good. It sounds as if you've flushed all the excitement out of your life. <laughs> it sounds like you've- you've- I haven't, I haven't. I- I've, I've, You've I've squeezed out your very- your joie de vivre. No, Has no. been flushed away. No. Well, perhaps, but- Are you- are know. you getting very spotty? Uh, no. Is that, is that a common thing? Sometimes that happens with a detox. All the toxins come out, oh. and you go through a phase of looking as if you've died. But you feel rubbish and you look worse. Yeah. I think too, I think you should retox really heavily tonight. <laughs> a big cake, a crack pipe, <laughs> uh, 20 bottles of white stripe. <laughs> I think that, you, it sounds like you've lost your vim, your vigour, your, your pep. Joe, oh, can you, I can I you remind I children out there not to take crack and cake? Don't smoke crack or eat lots of cake. <laughs> okay. Obviously that was a joke. I Lucy- cake there, couldn't- No, don't smoke cake. I'd give up the pipe, but not the cake. <laughs> Do not smoke cake. What, um, Lucy, what are you voting for? Is it gonna be the Beatles or the, uh, the public enemy? Well, the Beatles, of course. The Beatles? Yep. Yeah. Okay, there we go. You win a copy of Rip It Up and Start Again, Simon right. Reynolds' fascinating post-punk book. You excited about that? Yeah, definitely. I'll do you like to read? Uh, yeah, now I do, now I'm on my detail. Yeah, brilliant. There we go, uh, Lucy. Thanks for calling. So it's 1-0 to the Be Beatles. Uh, we've got another Lucy. Uh, hello. Hello, Lucy. Hi, I got a bit confused then, because I thought I was the first Lucy. Did you respond when we you said Lucy? <laughs> I was shouting at myself. Were you? <laughs> <laughs> Lucy, you're entirely different, though. You're at the other end of the Lucy spectrum. Really? Yeah, yeah. Are you full of women? I'm not detoxing. <laughs> it was when you started on that I realised it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> really? See, yeah. this is what happens. This is the difference between someone who is detox and someone who hasn't. I You're she's not awake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and what do you do, Lucy? Um. Well, I I, I can't tell you because I'm probably not meant to be on the radio. What do you do? Are you in a very powerful position? Yes, in some... I'm. I'm. I'm Shira. <laughs> You're Shira. <laughs> That's very powerful. You must know He Man then. I. I. Well, I. 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 What's I he really like? We've fallen out. You've fallen out. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's why you don't see a wow. family anymore. So, Lucy, you're amazingly powerful, but you're insane. Yeah, is the reason that you're not allowed to tell us because you've escaped from a special hospital? But, but this is this is why, you know, I mean, power and insanity goes yeah, hand you, in hand. I, I, bet, I bet you Lucy runs the BBC or something. Oh, yeah. You, 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 oh, she, she <laughs> said a naughty word. Lucy, you're <laughs> out of control. <laughs> You are out of control. The I word is Sith. Tell children not to say that, and especially not Frank. Sorry. All right, Lucy, let's, let's wind this up. Come on, who are you voting <laughs> for? The Beatles Public or... Public Enemy. Public Enemy, well it's, done. Yes, yes, yes. Nice one, Mr. Cockney. Thank you. 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 Thank you're all right. What do you think of the Lucy's there? Um, I, I think I think it's the stuff in this this detoxing stuff. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm currently retoxing at this moment. Really? Well, can I ask you, which was your favourite Lucy out of the two Lucy's? Um, the second one because of her silliness. She <laughs> was silly, wasn't she? And her she? foul mouth. She was keyed up to <laughs> su such a point of heightened poshness that yeah. she was just all wow. over the shop. 
<laughs> swearing, <laughs> bouncing off the walls, getting excited. <laughs> and she, I bet you she does have quite a powerful position in some company or other. Anyway, what, what are you going to vote for, Perry? I'm, I'm going to vote for the Beatles. Yeah, mm. come on. <laughs> and you know the track, obviously, I mean, it's very well known. Both these tracks oh, yeah. are extremely well known. And, uh, have you made up your mind how you're going to vote? Don't talk to us, obviously, about the, anything political, but have you made <laughs> up your mind? I, I, I can't be bothered. Yeah, oh, you can't be bothered. You've got to use that vote. No, that, that is my political stance at this time. You've got to use the vote. Come on, Perry, use the vote. <laughs> Even if it's just tactical, Perry, you've got to get in the ballot box. It's and fun. Voting's fun. You get to look inside your local primary school. What? what? <laughs> yeah. Well, I went there anyway, so what's the point? <laughs> well, you go, it's a good excuse to go back and you tick your name off. It makes you feel like you belong and matter. Okay, Perry, well done. So there we go. We've been told to, uh, to speed this up, otherwise we're not going to have time to play the track. Uh, it is 2-1 to the Beatles. What's going on? Karen, are you there? Hello. Hello, Karen. How are you? Um, I'm very well, yes. How are you? I'm fine. Well, you sound so chattable too, but we've used up all our chit-chat time. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Talking to Lucy, oh, Lucy and Perry. Safe. Who are you voting uh, for? Beatles, Beatles or Public Enemy? The Beatles, what's going on? What's that? What, what is that then? It is, well, that's it then, isn't that's it? That's it. That's the end of the story, isn't it? Beatles have won. Uh, Lyda, li li have you made an error? Uh, I believe someone <laughs> changed their vote. Someone's changed their vote. Someone's changed their vote there. Because Cornish had swept the board, hadn't he? Cornish had pretty much And Lila was trying to make it dramatic, and now it's all gone. Someone, boobs someone, up. I believe it could have been Karen, did change your vote. Karen, have you changed your vote? Are you still there, Karen? No. I'm helping with time. You were helping with time by changing yeah, your vote. Yeah, you short time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't Karen, do that. Brilliant. You made Karen, a mockery you of the entire political oh, process. So, so you actually called in to vote for Public Enemy? Yeah, I did. Well, there you go. Well, stick with your vote. Public Enemy, <laughs> two or... All right, then. Karen, well, where can we got to loonies on the line today? Are we only being broadcast in a mental home? Well, now we know what's gonna win, don't we, after that? Who's, well, who's uh, next? Who's the last caller? The last caller is Rob. It's actually Liam. Rob was, uh... Liam, Liam, Liam are you there? Hello, Adam and Joe. Hello, Liam. This is a, f a flipping disaster, wouldn't you say? I, I'm, well, I'm disappointed in other people's votes, really. So uh, why? I've got the casting vote, and I may even win the Miami Vice, and she was just trying to rob me. Well, exactly. It's scandalous. It's, it's like an election. It's like a corrupt election. It you... is. I, I think it's the postal vote. It's ruining it. Yeah. You've got the casting vote, Liam. What's it going to be? Beatles or Public Enemy? I have to fight the power. Hey, well done. You see, I haven't won for four weeks and finally I win, so thank you there for, you know, giving no me problem, some self-respect. Hey, thanks for calling everybody and thanks for listening to our show. We'll be back next week between, uh, one and three here on XFM. And make sure you do go out and vote. Come on, there's no excuse. It's, it's fun. It's an enjoyable way of keeping the democratic process going. And, uh, you know, uh, just vote. And here's yeah. Public Enemy.
Okay, I'm afraid we've got to go into the ads now, Joe. I'm sorry to cut this off. How dare you? I'm sorry. Also How dare you? This is typical, typical white man's attitude to my music. Sorry about that. <sighs> also, I want to apologize for misusing the word swinging. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't mean what I said it meant at all. What does it mean? It, it means o overly onerous. Justin Lee Collins is coming up next. If you don't know him, he's got a very heavy Bristol accent. Don't know if you've noticed that. Give what, us watch out for that. Give us a shout out, Justin. All right, you lovely boys. Do you hear that? Very West Country. Take care of Justin. He's not feeling that brilliant today. He's looking a little bit fragile. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. XFM.